Welcome to Digging Deeper, a podcast of Perimeter Church in Atlanta, Georgia, hosted by me, Jeff Norris, along with my co-host, Laura Story Elvington. This podcast aims to equip you to follow Jesus by digging deeper into the teachings and the topics of the Bible and culture and life. In this season called Believe, we'll sit down with many exciting guests who will help us understand the current and future direction of belief in Jesus in our world today and how we as God's people can engage in God's mission to lead others to believe in Him. We're excited that you've joined us as we explore the treasures of God's Word and apply its teachings to our lives as followers of Christ. Now let's jump into today's discussion. We're thrilled that you're with us again for another episode of Digging Deeper, and we are thrilled, Laura and I are, uh, to have this awesome guest with us today. Justin Early has joined us all the way from Richmond, Virginia, literally here in person. A lot of times we have to do these interviews um, via Zoom or something like that, but to have you here in person is an honor, and we're grateful so thanks for joining us, man. I'm thrilled. Yeah. I don't expect any lag in the video feed. That's here, right. So yeah, we don't have to worry about that, right? <laughs> yeah, it's nice. <laughs> that's always always good when that's the case. Um, and the reason you're here in person is because we're actually recording this on January 22nd, which is when you're with us here in person to speak to our uh, school parents and greater congregation parents, um, just equipping night here at Perimeter and talking about habits of the household and things like that, which mm-hmm. is one of the books that you've written. Uh, so let's start there. Well, actually, before we jump into some yeah. of your work, um, let's start with this. Tell us about you. Like, there, there may be some tuning in that go, hey, that's a cool name, Justin Early, but I don't know anything about him. That's, yeah, probably um, most of them. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, family, uh, you're an author, you're a lawyer, mm-hmm. right? So that's right. Uh, tell us about yourself. What are things you'd want us to know? Yeah, so I um, am a husband to Lauren. I've got four boys at the time of this recording. They are, wait for it, <laughs> five, six, nine, and 11. So oh, we're in a four boy stage of family where we are out of the naps and diapers, but not yet into adolescence. So lots of playtime, mm-hmm. lots of wrestling, fighting, lots calm. of things broken in the house. Yeah, totally calm. Everything's calm mm-hmm. and quiet. And, yeah. Lauren is completely outnumbered. God bless her. She's wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> she is a saint. Yeah, she is. We'll talk more about her as we go along. Um, but so yeah, so I'm a business lawyer. Okay. That is my day job, so to speak. Um, my whole story in brief is I actually started as a missionary to China with oh, well. Campus Crusade. Really? Five years outside of University of Virginia. Oh, nice. And then I had calling experience, which is probably the subject for a different podcast, on the streets of Shanghai, where I actually felt really called to go be a business lawyer. How about that? Which is not a statement you hear a lot, but yeah. I, I did. I really did feel called to, awesome. to go uh, work in missionally in business law, and so I ran at that super hard. Mm. It, we went to Georgetown Law, did really well. Um, had we had our first two sons while I was in law school, and I moved down to Richmond, Virginia, where I started working in an international law firm doing mergers and acquisitions, mm. and my life fell completely apart in a major mental health anxiety meltdown. And at the time, I would have said my head was on completely straight. Like I, 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 I had then, and I think now, like you know, a good worldview. Um, what I thought were my beliefs were in place, at least in my head. The, like the architecture of yeah. my house yeah. was just like everybody else's. The habits that I was doing, but the it was nicely decorated with this Christian content of calling. And I see now that I think it, it collapsed because I was living just like all the other crazy top law school students and running 90 miles an hour all the time at law. Uh, I sum it up like that now because I didn't know all that at the time. I just knew I was I was not able to sleep. I was having to take medication just to sleep. I was incredibly anxious. And I I I had this moment in my life where I was like, how is it that my head can go Mm -hmm. this way, but my heart is way out in left field. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it was a really tough time in my life. But I'm so grateful for it because it was one of the times where the Lord came in and showed me that your head can go this way and when your habits go this way, your heart tends to follow the habits. Oh, that's good. And I really started, that was the first time in my life where I woke up to the fact that I was not just a brain on a stick. I was not just a worldview machine, that I actually had a life of practice and habit that my my heart wanted to follow. And so to really, Mm -hmm. you know, they say, you know, even the demons know the Lord's name. it's one thing to say all the truths. It's another thing to orient your life around them and realize that 
that that habit and head are meant to sort of intertwine and do a full following of Jesus with the heart. Um, that was a radical like life change for me. I started writing about habit while I was experiencing the Lord's yeah. like renewal in my life. I was just like, you know, as, as it happens when the Lord's doing something in your life, you kind of start to want to tell people about it. And I was writing mm -hmm. about how habits were changing my life. And through a series of providential events, uh, I ended up getting an email from IVP saying, do you want to write about this? Oh, and I was man. like, I've been waiting my whole life for someone to ask me to write. I've always loved writing. <laughs> um, but so that's how I got my first book contract as a lawyer. I, that was six, seven years ago. And I am still practicing law full time. I run my own business law firm. And but now I praise God, get the chance to write and speak as well. That's so cool. Wow. Yeah. I got to mention just because there's a lot I want to follow up on there. But one of the things is that um, I, I just we had not connected offline about that you were um, a missionary in China with with crew. A huge part of my life. And, so thankful for that. And I have a similar. Yeah. So I've, I've been. A, we'll have to connect offline. But yeah. I have went many times to China with crew. Did I was you? on staff with crew for 13 years before coming here. Yeah, so. We have a lot to talk about. Yeah, we, we, got talk lot, about we got a lot. Yeah. We probably know some of the yeah. same people. Um, but uh, anyway, we'll talk about that later. But were you ever in Shanghai between 2006 only, and 2011? No, uh, maybe. I'll have to think about that. It'd be, it'd be funny if we realized we actually crossed paths. Yeah. Yeah, it seems like y'all would have seen each other. Like if you'd been in the same place, the two yeah, we, tall white guys. <laughs> yeah, the connections <laughs> are funny. I'll tell you, this is gonna be really short, but it's just worth it. I met a guy in, in Richmond one time where I live. We're just we're striking up conversation. I realize he's a Christian. I start t talking about, I, I lived in Shanghai. He's listening to me, and then he goes, I rode on the back of your motorcycle in China. <laughs> and I was like, what? <laughs> wow. This small world, he actually had come visit a friend who was a missionary, and I had driven him to lunch on my motorcycle. So, oh, that's wow. amazing. Maybe you did, too. Well, you never maybe, know. Maybe you, you know, did. We, we look we back mainly, and find some pictures of that. <laughs> so the, the answer is probably no from the standpoint. We always did Beijing as our connecting point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We would only we only came through Shanghai as like a connecting flight or something. Yeah. Um, so I don't know that I ever actually got out into the city in Shanghai. But anyway, um, what we okay? I got to go back for a second because even all that you've shared so far is is really so interesting. And here's a thought though, or a question: When all that was happening, when your when your life was crumbling, so to speak, mm -hmm. and the anxiety was so high, and your heart was chasing the habits, not your head. Um, we're, uh, give me a time frame. Married at this point? Kids at this point? Yeah, I'm married with two young children. Okay. I'm, I'm you know, I've graduated law school. I've, like, as one does, like, started to accrue a lot mm -hmm. of responsibilities. Um, and it was in my, like, th right at turning 30 okay. mm -hmm. that, that, that this happened. And, but, but, I mean, I'll tell you, you know, I was self-identified as the missionary to law in business so yeah. like my head I thought I think was in a really really good place yeah but I had become converted the missionary had become converted to the nervous medicating lawyer mm. in really short order and I really had to reckon and I was baffled with why why do I feel like why is my heart panicked when my head is mm. telling me that you know the, the Lord is sovereign yeah. And I was like, something about me is not actually believing this. I'm saying it, but something about me is not, something about the fullness of who I am, body, heart, mind, soul, um, which is always a bit of a mystery. Yeah. But to really believe that God is sovereign and reigning over mm -hmm. my life, would I think would mean that I'm resting to some extent in his promises. Yeah, and that was a lot of, I was like, why? What is, and... Um, I mean, I came up with nothing new. Like if you read The Common Rule, my first book, you'll very quickly realize it's about all the classic spiritual disciplines that Christians have done, you know, and mm -hmm. that Jesus taught. <laughs> but for me, it was a rediscovery of how important actually modeling your life after Jesus's life and, and after the, the way that the church has learned to follow him and that the Holy Spirit has moved in many ways. You know, it's simple stuff like scripture mm. and community and prayer, but realizing that nothing in your life right now in this modern moment in America is is shepherding you in that direction. You're living yeah. in an invisible raging current of habits that's going the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. And so it's particularly in places like like law school, but there's a ton of them. You know, I'm not, I might be extreme, but I'm not unusual is yeah. what I tell people. Mm -hmm. yeah. So for, for me, a lot of that lesson was realizing that I, 
Jesus wanted, wants to sanctify me. I never had any question then about my, my justification. Mm -hmm. I was like, he wants to sanctify me. And I, I was like, I'm not cooperating. Like I'm living totally antithetical to a life of following Jesus, even while I talk about this stuff. So hmm. that time in my life was where I started to, to actually say, what if the habits of my smartphone looked different? That might be important to following Jesus. What if I actually was resting, yeah. like practicing this sort of rhythm of, of Sabbath? What if I was actually present, practicing being present with people the way Jesus was? And I realized that those, those could be made habits hmm. and that it wasn't legalistic to do so. It was actually a searching out of the one who's calling you and that that was freeing, not limiting. Mm. That's great. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And before we get to habits, if, if we could just focus a little more on the, the before, what, so you, you say, I wasn't following Jesus with these habits. What were you following? Like, what was the stress? If you were to speak to the yeah. person who is not yet um, decided to, to make that change. So if you would have looked at my morning routine around that time, first thing I was doing as I was waking up and checking my email while still in bed, I would have never said my identity is in my vocation. Mm -hmm. I, would have, I would have said probably the most important thing about today is that I should have a quiet time or spend some time in prayer. Mm -hmm. But by habit, every morning I was looking to my inbox to see what do I need to do today. Mm. That's what my head was asking with my phone. Yeah. I think my heart under the radar now I see was asking my phone a super different question. It was, what kind of person do I need to be today in order to be approved mm -hmm. or lovable or justified? I was looking to my inbox to say, how can I earn my justification today? That was like taking my heart places, even though I never would have said that out loud. But habits, that's why I say habits lead the heart. Yeah. you know. And then my next habit would have been rush out the door, whether or not I get food or whether or not my family's um, on, t you know, just everybody go because... I'm busy and I'm always busy. And I never say no to anything because I feel like it's important. <laughs> I feel like I'm important when people want my time. And just that was, I think, another what I call liturgy of looking to other people to approval, even though I wouldn't say that. Mm -hmm. So as I'm turning along in these things, and then you can go with the, the smartphone and it's ever, ever constant presence in my life of like, that's what I respond to. Um, and just in that like thumb swipe of what's next, what's next, what's next. I think that was forming me in a way of what's important about today was to respond to the recent things or the urgent things, not the important things mm -hmm. or the relevant things of who do I need to love today through my work, which mm -hmm. is the, the central call of you know, any vocations, not can I get it all done? It's like, how am I loving my neighbor yeah. through this particular vocation the Lord has called me to? And I think that's true in accounting and lawyering and stay at home mm -hmm. momming or dadding or pastoring or whatever. But my habit was just to pay attention to the most recent thing. And that was also, I think, leading my heart somewhere. So you put all these together and I like to challenge people with thinking about habits like liturgies, mm -hmm. because if you think about it, they're actually pr pretty similar. They're yeah. both repeat things that we do over and over, semi-consciously to unconsciously. Just liturgy admits that it's about worship. I think all the habits I just mentioned of scheduling of emails of, and you could add social media, you could add lots of stuff in there. Um, are they form our heart? They take us somewhere, but they don't admit that they're about worship. And my big thing is like, uh, open up, open your eyes. A lot habits define your day, and it's leading you in worship of things mm -hmm. to answer your question. Mm. Like, I'm limitless. I'm omniscient. I'm omnipresent. I'm omnipotent. I can do all this stuff. So it's like it's just it, for me. I think it's just the fundamental sin of Eden, of like, I'm kind of God. <laughs> like I think I, I functionally I think I'm the God of today yeah and I just want to say you know what's important to realize about that is like I said I never would have said that I knew that was a wrong thing to say but I acted like that was true and that affected my heart and I think all of us are living in a world where you're encouraged to act like that is true and that's going to pull your heart somewhere so by saying I'm gonna do little things like scripture before phone I'm going to do things like turn my phone off an hour every day. I'm going to do things like actually take a Sabbath. This is, these were rhythms in the first book, mm -hmm. The Common Rule, that I wrote about. Um, they're not magic. They don't immediately change your, your heart, but they set up a lifestyle where you're more inclined to say, oh, right, I'm not God. God is God. Yeah. Let me acknowledge that today. And, and as you do that, unsurprisingly, worship changes you. Mm. So as you mm. start to incorporate these little routines where you're actually looking to God, he is faithful 
to start to change your heart. And I'm a very different person than I was eight years ago when this happened. I mean, very different. I'm much more stressed and much more busy because I have four kids <laughs> and I run my own law firm and now I speak and write, but I'm way more peaceful in my heart. I'm way more, the Lord has made me to something that that is my calling and I can do that happily. So the stressed and busy is, is, not, is a condition of my outward schedule, not my heart. And that's a, it's a really different than where I was eight years ago. Hmm. Praise God. Amen. We talk a lot about formation around here mm. um, and how ev- all of life is formational. What I hear, I hear you saying a lot is um, the habits that we form, the way in which we choose to live life, whether we realize it or not, whether we recognize it or admit it, is forming us into who we are. Amen. Right? Yeah. And so we have to, therefore, if that's the case, if that's reality, period, then we have to then think very deliberately and intentionally about, okay, what, what are my habits? Yeah. Because that's what's ultimately going to form me. And we talk a lot about how we have a discipleship problem. If, if discipleship is ultimately formation, we're helping people be formed into Christ. That's right. Then that means fundamentally we as Christians, most of us, and myself included, are allowing ourselves to be formed in ways um, that aren't making us more like Christ. Yes. Um, and a lot of that, to your point, is leading us back to recognizing, well, why is that? Well, because it's not always because of my heart or my head. Yeah. It's because of my habits. Right. And my habits lead my heart more than they lead my head. And that can be... Is it right? Would you agree that it's that can be a more subliminal, more unconscious 100%. than we realize, right? Because like but you by said, by definition, habits are the things that are happening under the radar. Yeah, and that's why it's so hard, but also so important. Because mm. I, if, if you want to sum it up, I try to remind people: the question is not whether you have habits; it's what are they. Yeah, yeah. and the question is not whether you're worshiping someone or something in those habits but who are you worshiping mm. the question is not whether you're being formed but how are you being formed and it, just to put it really pointedly the question is not whether you're a disciple it's whose disciple are you, there you go. And i think yeah. most of us are disciples of modern day america and even as we go to church and being discipled by jesus having him form your habits as well as your your head is the goal and i think i grew up in a church in a movement like a corner of christianity that praise god was really good about teaching me about theology and worldview and never like this is not to demean that at all it's only to say that should also lead to saying i've got great education i also need great formation they yeah. intertwine they're not opposed they, they should be like they're not like opposite ends of a seesaw they're like a helixes of a dna they intertwine to make something complete but if we ignore formation it's to our peril because something will form us it's not yeah. like we're just not being formed. There's no neutral. Yeah, we're all human heart. Formed. You're rolling That's somewhere, right. you know. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so then, what's? Um, how do you lead people into experiencing new habits? What? How do we establish those? How did you establish new habits? Like, what were the most basic baby steps you took to see difference? Well, so when this happened to me, I was a man in crisis. So I was trying medication. I was trying counseling. I mean, I was really struggling in my mm-hmm. mental health. Um, and we got to a point with my wife and I, I, prov- I say randomly, providentially, where we were like, let's try to put some little governing guardrails on your days and weeks because mm-hmm. I was feeling chaos in my life. And, you know, I was reading at the time. I, I was reading um, sp- writers on the spiritual disciplines. Um, I was reading people like J- James K.A. Smith, who, mm-hmm. who, who like thinks about liturgy in daily life. You are what you love. Those, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So those were formative to me. I was also reading about the psychology of habit, things that I now see were providential, like that mm-hmm. the Lord was leaving me into. But I never, I, and I finished, I finished all those books, and I was always like, well, what? But what should I do? Because a lot of <laughs> yeah. those were upstream, like thinking about, yeah, you know, abstract liturgies in modern life or um, formation in theory, but not in practice. So it was a lot of trial and error. But I started to realize that certain practices, I mean, actually specifically the way it happens, I sat down with two of my friends, and this is really important, around the new year, it was around January, and I said, I want you all to keep me accountable to this little program of daily and weekly habits. And I always just had a lot of experimenting on there. They were takes on the spiritual disciplines, like Mm -hmm. scripture before phone, which Mm -hmm. I mentioned. Um, 
I had read somewhere that turning your phone off an hour a day was the best way to fight smartphone addiction. Um, I had heard of this thing called Sabbathing, somewhere from the Ten Commandments, <laughs> I think. You know, like, I'd never known anybody that practiced it. But, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, th there were other things um, on, the, on the list. I was, I was trying fasting really for the, in serious ways for the first time in my life. But I was also, I could tell you a ton of other things. I mean, I was almost neurotic because I was neurotic. I was in a tough place. Mm. So I was willing to try anything. What I ended up writing about and what I still practice today were the ones that really made a difference in my life. And they, they're they some of the ones that I mentioned. They were daily rhythms of prayer. There was a daily rhythm of reading scripture, daily rhythms of presence by turning off your phone. I mean, a lot of this had to do with technology. A yeah. lot of it was like, I'm yeah. gonna treat my phone different and thus treat my heart different. Um, because I, I tell people, the way you use your screens is probably one of the most important factors in your discipleship mm -hmm. to Jesus for you and your children, which is really important to think about. Yeah. Because it's huge. Remember, I'm a dad of two kids doing all this. Then suddenly there were three, there were, then there were four. And I hit the moment one day where I was like, have I thought about how this impacts parenting mm -hmm. at all? I, I hadn't, <laughs> you know, and that was, that was the next stage. But a lot of it was, how am I using my screens? And I think people waking up to the fact that their phones are discipling them, or at least part of the way they're being discipled, probably they're discipling them. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's the, a big part. I was like, oh, I need to discipline my phone because my phone is discipling me. Yeah. And flipping yeah. that, a lot of the spiritual disciplines were like, how am I going to handle? Scripture before phone was an easy way to say, I'm going to I'm gonna put myself in the way of the word of God before I put myself in the way of the words mm -hmm. of my emails. Mm. And that ordering of the heart, um, that was not just an ordering of a schedule. That was the ordering of a heart. Yeah. Yeah. That's so That's good, great. man. Well, I'll tell you, uh, I've read both of, of your books. The Habits of the Household was was incredibly helpful for me and, and our family. I think mostly, <laughs> partly because our kids are 11, 9, 9, and 5. So they're We're like yeah, right, they're right, the right close yeah. to where <laughs> yours are. But one of the things that my husband and I did, um, we read the book and then and loved it and then made another couple read it. And then we did a little two-day thing together where we talked about it and came up with our habits oh. so that we could hold each other accountable to the habits. This so, is the – you are the ideal. You're an A-plus student. I think you. <laughs> I, um, I don't know whether this is like if – I'm, if I qualify as an Uber fan or what. Uh, I don't know. If, but it, I wanted you to know – You need to include Laura in your next book <laughs> of I'm like an example of exactly Jeff was what. like, I think I read that, and I'm like, I got – Eight copies in my house. I'm just kidding. Well, people ask um, me all the time, like, how do you start, you know, uh -huh. this stuff? Whether it's about common rule spiritual disciplines or habits of the household. And I tell them, if the community, you start That's with it. community, read it with somebody else, mm. and then sit down with them and say, do what I accidentally did, just ending up with a friend saying, can you keep me accountable? Because yeah. mm -hmm. like, Jesus changes us in community almost all the time. Yeah. <laughs> it just tends to, this is the way he set up the church to work. Yeah. So. Yeah. I love what you did. Well, and but what a kind of reason I wanted to share it. What I found is, uh, first of all, it was one of the most helpful things that we've done. Um, just finding another family to to talk through it with, to hold us accountable. And I realized, uh, okay, so what's why haven't I done this sooner? <laughs> like, what was the barrier? <laughs> yeah. And I think a lot of it is no one wants to admit that their household is out of order. There, no one wants ah. to admit that uh, that they haven't been as intentional with their huh. kids. So w what do you find, uh, mm. how do you speak to people who, um, they're not quite sure even where to begin? Mm. They're, they're picking up the book and now, but they're yeah. not. <laughs> you know, I would say something that Bonhoeffer said to me or to us in, in Life Together. No one is surprised that you're a sinner. Yeah. Yeah. Like no one, <laughs> you got one option. To be friends with sinners, to be children of sinners, to be parents of sinners, to be church members alongside sinners. I mean, nobody is surprised that you are a broken person. And so I just want to gently suggest, so why don't we talk like it? Yeah. Like, like, why don't we admit it? Yeah. I, I think for me, I was honestly, Laura, so broken by my mental health crisis that I told you about, humbled by it, that... I realized, oh my gosh, I really can't help help myself. Like I got to a point where I was realizing I 
I am much weaker person than I thought. I'm a much more broken person. I'm a much more fragile person than mm -hmm. I thought. This is not the, the way I wanted to conceive of myself, but it was yeah. the reality. And I think the Lord showed me in that process that, you know, his grace in my life and his grace coming through community in my life was my only hope. Like, truly, like, there was no That's way good. I was digging myself out of that. And unfortunately, I think most often the Lord does need to break us down to, before we realize the truth of that. Mm -hmm. But I always try. I always hope. I was like, listen to me so that you don't have to experience what I said. Admit that you're yeah. like, go get help now, you know? Yeah. And I th that became true. With, so by the time I started thinking about this with my kids, I think I was comfortable saying as, and I hope I still am, being I mean, like, oh yeah, our household's wild. You know, Ooh. like mm -hmm. you're not going to walk in to my house and be like, this is the kind of guy that should write a book on parenting. <laughs> You're going to walk into my house and be like, this is messy. Like, yeah, you should read a book on um, parenting. <laughs> wow, he's raising his voice a lot at them. Uh, yeah. Wow, they're like gritting their teeth and, you know. Um, th but, but again, that's what it's like to look into any of our lives. None yeah. of us have neat, you know, moral, obedient lives. And if we're pretending like it, then we're missing out that's on good. all the opportunities to experience the grace of Jesus. I mean, there's nothing good about grace until we to world centers who need it yeah. and of course that's not to, to glory and stay in where we are but it's the place where we get called forward so i think it getting together with other parents and admitting it, things aren't going great you know now before it's like things really aren't going great in that's my marriage good. or things really aren't going great with my kids or mm -hmm. is is it's such a beautiful thing to talk to young families young marriages and say y'all let's admit it now we're sinners mm -hmm. as husbands and wives we're sinners as parents how can we work together to invite Jesus' grace into this place in this yeah. community? Because um, really no one's good. surprised that you're a sinner. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So. Yeah, hiding sin and pretending to not be as uh, broken as we truly are doesn't allow us the space to be transformed by grace. No, yeah. and it's the enemy's favorite thing that you can do. That's right. If you want to follow his marching orders, pretend that you're okay. Yeah, mm. yeah that's so that's good. good. All right, how about one more question from each of us? Yeah, so, uh, you know, there's a positive side of habits, right, where, of course, habits can lead us into following, uh, or our heart can follow our habits in a way that leads us into things that are not healthy. Mm -hmm. But the opposite is true, where if we begin to establish some habits that are healthy, yeah. then, our, then our heart will follow, right? right? right. And, and uh, we, we've actually talked around here about, we call it the, the principle of the lagging heart, where sometimes people say, I've been asked a lot over the years, you know, uh, you know I don't feel like mm. studying the word. I don't feel like praying. I don't yeah. feel like yeah. doing this or that, you know, so shouldn't I just not do it if my heart's not in it? Because ah. God wants a, he wants our heart engaged, right? Right. right. Um, and over the years, I have answered more and more to where now I completely answer that question is, well, do it anyway. Oh, yeah. Because the more you establish that rhythm, the more your heart will actually begin to engage with that that's rhythm right. that you've established. That's what liturgy is all about. That's yes. what, I mean, that's kind of the part of our formation right. process. Right. And we're actually, we're hurting ourselves if we believe, well, I'm not going to do it unless my heart's in it. That's exactly It's like, right. man, we're going to, you're going to be waiting a while sometimes because your heart's not <laughs> You might be, be waiting there. your whole life. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And I, I think, I think that's so important. I, I actually think that was a big part of my um, experience in history. I think, I half understood grace in that, like, I can't change myself, you mm -hmm. know, and that, and that only like, like Jesus looks at the heart. And I, and I thought, yeah, so why pray unless I feel like it, which is, that, that's where you start to get, that's an odd conclusion, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, one, theologically, I started to realize that's not how Jesus talks to us. Yeah. That's not how the scriptures talk to us. Um, if you read Paul's letter, letters, he's, super clear on salvation by faith uh you know through grace not by works we got nothing to boast about like this is always clear he's also always clear in the second half of his letters that there's a lot of things he wants us to do yeah. you know and that he feels he's saying it in the holy spirit so mm -hmm. he's very comfortable being like you're saved by grace the works have nothing to do with it i got a lot of ideas of the works you should be doing yeah. yes. you know and then he starts to tell us you know do this don't do that do this don't do that and i think i woke up in the middle of this period being like why don't I, why don't I talk to myself that way? Mm. If that's the way the scriptures are talking to me, mm. um, 
and and think about this if you're a parent and you know I'm often thinking like a parent talking to mm-hmm. parents now is like you wouldn't raise your kid that way because you intuit the human heart a lot more than that if your child says I don't want to clean my room because I don't feel like it mm-hmm. you would say that's okay my job is to train you to be a person who starts to feel like cleaning hopefully you know, circa yeah. college or young twenties, like you By actually the time start, you're on your own, get right. your life together because you realize it's a good thing to do. So right now we're going to practice it by doing it when I say do it, you know, yeah. which is like a more fulsome way of saying, because I said so, you know, yeah. But, yeah. but it's the way of a parent saying like, that's, you know, and I tell my kids this with, with prayer, with being nice to their brother, with saying, sorry, and I forgive you with obeying me, you know, there's, the our words and our actions you know they they have a capacity to lead the heart yeah so i'm like so we're going to practice the right ones here even though i know this is not going to save you this is not going to change you but it's it's going to be a, putting you in the way of the lord's grace and i'm called to to do that yeah. and i think and, and we're called to do that so and we totally get that by the way sorry to interrupt but here's yeah. a quick thought we, we we totally get that with other things in life like working yeah. out working out of the you gym, get if you right? think about your body athleticism workout yeah. you like how often do you go, man? I, I really want to go to the gym. I yeah, really right. want to go to that team practice. Right. You know, I really. You don't, but you go anyway. Because and then you usually because of accountability. You did, and then you because it changed the benefits. You. That's right. There you go. That's mm-hmm. right. Yeah. And, and the way I just I try to sum this up for people is just to remind them, habits don't change God's love for you. Mm. God's love for you should change your habits. So that's good. Work in that d- direction. You know, you this is not legalistic. But this is biblical, yeah, and it is. It can be motivated by the love of God for you. So That's good. we all, we want we want to be shaped in that. I mean, yeah. He's for our good. He wants to make us happy. You know, life and life to the full. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So He's inviting us into this way of the good life. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Justin, yeah. thank you so much uh, for your vulnerability, yeah. for mm-hmm. sharing where you've been, for sharing uh, what God's teaching you now. Uh, tell us what is next. Are, is there a new project? Is there? Oh, yeah. There doesn't need to be. It sounds like you have enough jobs, but <laughs> so don't feel pressure to do more. But is there something? Another project coming up? I yes, yes, lots of them. I I feel so grateful because I always wanted to write. Um, I also love being a lawyer. I do feel called to to both of them, and I just feel grateful now that the Lord has given me opportunities to do both. Mm-hmm. Mm. So, yeah, I we um. I'm working on a children's book. Oh, that's oh, going cool. to the illustrator now. Just a, sort of another way of thinking about uh, grace and mess in the household being the place where God's work. It's totally about animals and big desserts getting messed up and siblings learning to reconcile. So, but it's just fun. But it's another way of coming at this. We just put out a video series on habits of the household to help parents oh. do exactly what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Go through stuff in community. Um, I am really excited about just this year we i released my third book called made for people which Mm. we didn't talk about but it's it's about the spiritual discipline of friendship which is Mm. maybe a never a phrase people haven't put together before but it's kind of like what i was mentioning earlier where you we understand the grace of jesus in our life Mm -hmm. so much more when we're walking with other people in Mm. vulnerability yeah so it's about that um and i could keep going on but like that's going to make That's people exciting. think, oh, my gosh, how is he doing all this? And I just, I write one hour a day, and then I work my lawyering job, and the Lord has been faithful to produce fruit through That's that. That's so, so cool, man. Uh, cool. I would love for people to follow along and hear about, if they like this, follow along and hear more right, about so all there's that. A, one last question. How do they follow you? Where, where, where's the easiest place to kind of follow what, what you're up to and what you're putting out? If you go to my website, justinwhitmoreearly.com, Okay. Ask Google how to spell it. Just Google Justin Early Author. <laughs> okay. Um, or maybe if you have show notes, you could put it in there or something. Yeah. But yeah, for sure. Yeah. People yeah. go there and then you can join my email list, and that's a great way to follow along. Okay. I also I've got, you know, my spiritual disciplines around social media, but I do I am active on Instagram talking about these concepts. And so if people want to follow me there, awesome. They're welcome to follow along that's and I'll great. talk to you like this. And you can always reach out, message me or email me. It may take a while, but I tend to get back to people. <laughs> Great. That's good. If Man. if you if it didn't take a while, we would be concerned about you, you yeah, living what you're doing all day. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's right. If you were responding quickly, it's like, wait, what are his habits? Yeah. Yeah, 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 that's great, man. Well, thanks for joining us. 
thanks for sharing your heart with us. And uh, this will have long happened since this air, by the time this airs, but thanks for even what you're going to share tonight with our people. Well, so. I'm really excited about it. Thank you all for having me here and great conversation. I really yeah, appreciate absolutely. it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And thank you for tuning in and listening and watching. If you're watching us on YouTube, uh, digging deeper. And we're excited to be in this series around the concept of belief. So keep tuning in with us in the, in the episodes to come.